Hello and welcome to another weather forecast discussion video here, everybody. Happy Friday morning out there. Uh, we got lots to talk about in this video here. We're talking heavy rainfall, severe weather, a quieter pattern here to follow, followed by a lot of major heat as we head towards the middle and end of July, as well as an active tropical setup across the eastern Pacific as well. That and much more coming up here in this video. Everybody, uh, welcome here on your Friday morning. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely do so here as I'm almost to 200 subscribers, so please help me out. I definitely appreciate that. Also, drop a like here down below in the video. I also appreciate that very much. So today we're talking about here some uh, rainfall amounts here. Uh, the last 24 hours, we're seeing some heavy rainfall uh, footprint across portions of the middle Missouri Valley from northeast Kansas all the way through northern uh, Missouri here in southern Iowa. Also some decent rainfall occurring up into Montana here through the day as well. And then some scattered showers and storms here across the Ohio Valley getting down through the mid-Atlantic and southeast here the last 24 hours as well. But generally here as you look uh, through the past 72 hours here, we did have a pretty decent footprint of some rainfall across the upper Midwest and dropping down into the southern Great Lakes here around the Chicagoland area, Milwaukee, even down here into portions of the Des Moines area and just to the north of there. We did have rainfall amounts here the past 72 hours approaching six inches of rainfall. Uh, so that is uh, uh, definitely some good news across portions of the Corn Belt here. They definitely need the rainfall for those corn crops and the bean crops across these areas as well. Also of note, like I said, the last 72 hours, some pretty heavy rainfall has actually fallen across most of east central Montana as well, with some spots, again, approaching over that four to six inch mark across those areas as well. However, you do notice across portions of Texas, Oklahoma, up into portions of Arkansas, southern uh, portions there of Missouri into the Ozarks, as well as the southwestern United States, you're kind of not seeing much in the way of rainfall here, and that's due to all that heat out there, a lot of sinking air here, so you did not see a lot of rainfall in the past 72 hours. Also, looking back here to yesterday on your Thursday, we did have a lot of wind reports across the Tennessee Valley getting down into the southeast here, the Carolinas, and then some uh, more hail reports across portions of west central Montana, even some you know quarter to even up to golf ball size hail being reported up in those areas here as well, even into portions there of South Dakota and Missouri, so definitely an active here day uh, yesterday as well. We did have 59 wind reports here, uh, 23 hail reports, eight of those being significant here for a total of 82 severe weather reports on your Thursday. As we transition here into the day today, we got all that heat bottled up here to the south across portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and much of the Gulf Coast here. But to the north of there, we still have that summertime weather here with the 80s uh, still prominent across portions of the uh, Dakotas, getting down into portions of Nebraska and over there here into portions of Wyoming and uh, uh, Montana as well. And across those areas, we'll have those mid-level disturbances continue to move across here to the north and northeast of this ridge, and that will be here kind of featuring some severe weather potential as we go through this afternoon and this evening. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk of severe weather across most of Montana getting into western nor uh, North Dakota. We do have that marginal risk extending down here in the western plains across the panhandle of Nebraska, western South Dakota portions of eastern Colorado, and then getting all the way down toward the Amarillo area here in the Texas Panhandle, and then kind of shifting east across the Mid-South and in towards the Southeast as well. Another slight risk area here across portions of the Ohio Valley, so downstate Illinois and Indiana, and getting into portions of Kentucky there, you do have that slight risk for severe weather. And that's also where you do have that 2% chance here for tornadoes across portions of the lower Ohio Valley, so definitely got to watch out for that. Also another secondary area here of tornado potential, a 2% tornado risk across northeastern Montana into western North Dakota here as well. We're also seeing that wind risk here, that 5% chance here of wind in that marginal risk area, and then that 15% chance here of uh, damaging winds in that slight risk area across Montana into western portions of North Dakota, and then getting down to the Ohio Valley as well. And then also here of note as well, the lapse rates are going to be pretty steep across portions here of the Montana area, getting into western North Dakota. And what this means is that you have colder air as you go up in the atmosphere, <laughs> And this will actually kind of make for a kind of a dangerous setup for some large hail across portions of Montana as well as the hailstones definitely start to grow larger as you have that colder air aloft. And lo and behold, you do see a 15% hatched area of large hail that could be two inches or larger in diameter across most of uh, Montana, especially north central and northeastern Montana, even a little sliver here of far northwestern North Dakota as well. So we'll definitely have to watch out here for more golf ball size hail or larger 
pressure across that region as we head into the rest of today. So looking here at the composite reflectivity uh, using the NAM 3KM model here, we do have a kind of a complex of showers and storms moving across central Illinois, maybe some scattered showers and storms into eastern Iowa during the morning hours here today. We'll start to shift that complex over across portions of the Ohio Valley as we head into the middle of this afternoon around the 3, 4 o'clock time frame. And then as we get in towards peak heating here towards late this afternoon, you know, 4, 5, 6 o'clock toward that dinner time frame, we really start to hear, introduce some showers and storms here across portions of Montana, getting down through the western plains here across the, uh, 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 the Nebraska Panhandle, getting into western South Dakota, eastern Colorado, all the way down to the Texas Panhandle, and also some more scattered showers and storms here, possibly outflow boundary driven across portions of the Ohio Valley here as well as we head in towards that peak heating time frame here. And that will just continue as we head into the overnight hours, kind of a cluster of storms developing and propagating to the east-northeast across portions of northeastern Montana. And then another kind of clustering of some showers and storms, maybe some strong gusty winds on the leading edge here down towards the Tennessee Valley as we head in towards the overnight hours into early Saturday morning. But generally, as we head through the next, you know, 12 hours to 24 hours or so, you can expect some heavier rainfall across portions here of the uh, Midwest into portions as well of the Ohio Valley with, you know, rainfall amounts of around an inch here in the next 12 hours. And then as we head in towards your Saturday, we got more heat continuing across portions here of the uh, Midwest um, and all the way up into portions of the uh, North Northern Plains. We got uh, temperatures rising back into the 90s all the way up here into North Dakota and getting up into Southern Canada. And that will fuel more instability here as well as we have a strong jet stream continuing across this region and uh, you can see a, a shortwave trough continuing to kind of uh, shift in across portions of the Pacific Northwest and that will lead to again another chance for severe weather here a slight risk across portions of east central Montana getting in through North Dakota and far northwestern uh, Minnesota as well and then kind of a frontal boundary kind of sagging down to the south and east here across portions of the uh, Carolinas the Tennessee Valley in the southeast bringing that marginal risk here for severe weather as well here on your Saturday you can see a 2% chance here of tornadoes across nor uh, northern portions here of the, you know, northern plains. You can see eastern portions of North Dakota, northwestern Minnesota. You can have a 2% chance here for tornadoes. And we are concerned about that as we do have some strong and even extreme values of instability starting to here shift up to the north across the northern plains, upper Midwest here on your Saturday afternoon, uh, combined with some stronger bulk shear, uh, some effective bulk shear values around 40 to 50 knots across these very same areas here, combined with that strong strong instability you definitely have some supercell potential on your Saturday. Now, I did take a sounding here of eastern North Dakota. You can see here some supercell values um, definitely showing up here. We do have a little bit of a cap in the lower level here of the atmosphere. Not too much of a hail growth zone, so I'm not too worried about a large hail threat here. Um, you know, those larger hailstones over two inches in diameter at this time. Um, but still seeing a potential of a marginal tornado tag on here, so kind of marginally supportive of tornadic storms. So we definitely have to watch out for that across eastern North Dakota here on your Saturday. So looking at the composite reflectivity going into the afternoon hours, you can see some isolated supercells continuing to take shape here across North Dakota. That'll shift here across portions of uh, Minnesota as we head into the evening hours. We're not seeing too much of a conve uh, convective footprint across the NAM model here, just kind of due to the fact that we might have kind of a cap on the atmosphere. I'll show you that here in a moment. But we do have some storm potential back into Montana here as well we'll have to watch. And that will kind of propagate across western North Dakota, southern Canadian prairies as we head into the overnight hours into your Sunday morning so that will be something to watch and like i was just mentioning we do have a strong very you know very strong capping inversion on the atmosphere across much of the northern and central plains and that kind of may suppress some of the stronger updrafts and actually may suppress some of the coverage of storms so that's why we if any storms do develop they could be supercellular here as they'll be more discreet in nature and that's why we got to worry about that tornado threat here on your saturday but then going into Sunday, still the same theme here. We got temperatures in the 90s, well into the hundreds down into Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up through Kansas and Nebraska. And just to the north of there, we're watching kind of a frontal boundary that'll be sagging down to the south and east, a cold front. And ahead of that here, we got some more instability building. We got some strong mid and upper level jet support here with the stronger winds aloft. And that will definitely lend the support for some strong instability here developing along and ahead of a cold front as it moves to the south and east here on your Sunday. We got instability up and 
getting over 4,000 joules per kilogram here, so more than enough instability combined with some strong effective bulk shear values here as well uh, that will support that supercell thunderstorm potential as we head into your Sunday afternoon, mainly across Minnesota here as we head into that Sunday afternoon evening time frame where we have that effective bulk shear values approaching 50 knots once again across these areas. And you can see that kind of reflected upon the supercell compa uh, composite values across portions of Minnesota, particularly down here into southwestern Minnesota, northwest Iowa, getting into southeastern uh, South Dakota, northeastern Nebraska could have the potential of some supercells down in that area if we can have some storms fire in that area here as well. So looking at the composite reflectivity, moving into your Sunday afternoon, we can see some isolated storms popping up across northwestern Wisconsin during this time frame. And then we'll start to see more numerous and more scattered type showers and storms developing as we head into that Sunday evening time frame and that will continue as we have kind of a MCS or mesoscale convective system that will develop here as we head into the overnight time frame here on your Sunday as a strong low level jet here comes in across the west and northwest or the west and southwest rather um, out, out from the plains and kind of pointed towards the upper Midwest here and we could have another cluster of showers and storms across South Dakota here as well. So looking here at the overall the next you know few days going through the midday hours here on Monday with that cold front here and all that you know the shortwave trough moving across the Midwest this is how much rainfall you can expect here additionally across portions of the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains, just generally here a quarter inch to up to an inch in localized spots, especially if you get under some torrential rains with any organized severe thunderstorms or complexes of storms in those areas. Then transitioning to your Monday, we got a cold front continuing to sag south and east across the western Great Lakes in the Midwest here in the mid-Mississippi Valley. And along and ahead of that, we could have some more uh, isolated to scattered severe weather potentially here as well. We still got a kind of a stalled or slowing down here kind of cold front across the southeast, bringing some more unsettled weather from the Florida uh, Peninsula all the way down through the Gulf Coast here from the Carolinas uh, to portions of Louisiana here as well. Still pretty dry across Texas into portions of the Central Plains as we head into early next week as well. A little bit of that monsoonal flow will continue across the four corners on your Monday as well. And I did take a look at this here. The drought monitor did come out yesterday on your Thursday. I'm showing that to you now here. This did come out yesterday, like I said, July 5th, and starting to see a lot more moderate and severe drought start to develop, especially around the Tennessee Valley into portions of the southeast and up to the Midwest here as well, worsening drought uh, across Texas into much of the desert southwest here in the west coast here of the United States. A lot of that severe extreme and even that at worst case drought here, you know, that exceptional drought really starting to develop across these areas here as well. And I am starting to get concerned about this drought as we, the next six to 10 days here that July 3rd. 13th through the 17th time frame, starting to see well above average temperatures across portions of the inner mountain west, getting up into the northern plains and all the way down to Texas as well. And that will fuel some worsening drought conditions across these areas here as well. We got that trough kind of lingering across the eastern United States here, bringing uh, near normal to slightly below normal temperatures all the way through the 17th of July time frame. And then that will also bring here some much quieter weather across the uh, Midwest as well with generally below uh, below normal precipitation across these areas, kind of a little bit more active across the Gulf Coast and uh, portions of the desert southwest. So that is some good news as we could have above normal precipitation favored uh, where the areas that do need the rainfall here from those exceptional drought conditions. And that'll continue as we head towards the third week in July here, all the way through July 21st here, we got that above normal temperatures really dominating across most of the United States. In exception to portions of the southeast here, we could have a little bit of a tropical influence with some rainfall here, some tropical rainfall potential across portions of the Carolinas, getting down towards Georgia and Alabama during this time here. Um, you can see that here reflected on the Climate Prediction Center's forecast. You can see slightly above normal precipitation favored across the Gulf Coast, getting up through the Carolinas during this period. And again, very quiet across the Great Lakes here in portions of the Midwest and Northern Plains. And that's where you do see that below normal uh, precipitation uh, forecast forecast from the Climate Prediction Center on that time frame. So as we begin to kind of move towards the middle of July here, the GFS model is really starting to hint at, um, and a lot of the other longer range, uh, longer range models are really starting to hint at a very major heat wave extending all the way up into the southern and central Canadian prairies as we have 100 degree temperatures here on the GFS, the 0Z run uh, from last night, showing it all the way up to portions here of the Canadian and uh, United States border here with temperatures near the 100 degree mark 
Park, and even 105 here being across portions of the Central Plains here as well. And that really just continues here towards the 16th time frame. And even the 17th time frame, this really starts to expand in coverage and in a real estate here across the United States. So a very large ridge will start to dominate as we head towards the middle and end of July. And that will fuel uh, some worsening drought conditions across areas that have already need the rain, but cannot get the rain. So they'll continue to see the drought start to worsen as we head towards the end of the month. Now, turning our attention here to the tropics as well, we're starting to see kind of a, a lessening effects here of a Hurricane Bonnie that is really starting to weaken now. This is across portions of the Eastern Pacific. This is a smaller storm than it was recently. Not seeing all that, you know, deep convection with it like it was before. Um, starting to really shear out and it is now starting to become here a lot weaker and this will start to become here more of a tropical storm and then here a depression as we head towards late this weekend. Still Hurricane Bonnie right now. Um, maximum winds here at 90 miles an hour moving west at 17. So this is moving fairly quickly for a hurricane and like I said, it'll be weak toward a tropical storm and depression toward the end of the weekend. We are continuing to monitor a couple different locations here for some uh, tropical development once again in the eastern Pacific, very active in the eastern Pacific right now. You can see the next five days we got uh, the National Hurricane Center has a 70% chance of development here just to the south and east of where Bonnie was moving over the open waters to the west and then another kind of 10 to 20% chance of development just south of the uh, Mexican border and uh, south of the Mexican coast here and, uh, and just west here of uh, Central America once again on the heels of that other developing system that's likely to develop uh, the next five days as well. And generally, as you move in towards the eastern Pacific here, you can start to see we're really starting to get in towards the towards the peak of the, uh, you know, the hurricane tropical weather season across these areas. Uh, you can see as we get towards July, we really start to peak here and then kind of stay that way all the way through the fall months. And that is kind of translated here on the July 11th through the 20th, kind of uh, the tropical cyclone or origin points here. We really start to see a lot of storms originate across the eastern Pacific during this time here as well. And then they kind of move towards the west away from land for the most part uh, during this period. Very quiet across the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. Uh, that will continue here through the, at least the next five days. Not expecting anything major or anything really to develop across these areas. And then again, for the Atlantic season, we're well be, uh, before the peak here. But the peak looks like it'll be across portions here of the fall into the you know the early winter months. So we still got a long ways to go until we really start to ratchet up the intensity here of this hurricane season across the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. So we'll continue to watch that. And looking here at the waters in the eastern Pacific, a uh, kind of a mix between cold and warmer waters here with all the swelling from all the storms that have recently been moving through and developing. Very warm waters here in the Gulf, and that is kind of concerning if we do have some tropical development here in the next few weeks, as they'll just continue to warm up until we have that tropical development. Very favorable conditions here across the Gulf, so we'll have to really watch this here the next few weeks. Uh, but right now, I'm not seeing anything too major across these areas at this current time. So that was a lot to get to. I definitely appreciate everybody watching here. Uh, be sure to like my video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those here as soon as I possibly can. And also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please help me out in getting to 200 subscribers. I definitely appreciate everybody as well. I may be going live later here today as well, covering the severe weather potential. Uh, so definitely turn on, uh, turn on all notifications here uh, later today as well, and uh, be uh, notified for that. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a great Friday and the rest of your weekend out there.